What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna talk about what's right behind me. Not really, that's probably what your heart wants, but what your head is saying is, I've got a lot of kids, I need a lot of space, and we do a lot of traveling, I probably need a Honda Odyssey. So today we're gonna compare it to what else is out there in the market, and then of course how it stacks up against the trim levels below it and above it. So let's hop on in. probably living your life a quarter mile at a time. If Vin Diesel just whispered something in your ear, let's be honest, this probably isn't the car for you. But let's talk about what's underneath the hood. So I'm gonna pull you on in here and point out that this is a 3.5 liter V6 engine. This is putting out 280 horsepower, running out to a trim speed transmission, which then translates out to your wheels right here. So let's talk about what's under the hood and the spacing. So as you can see, I got a nice deep cavity back there that I can run some extra lines if I want to. I've got a fuse box, windshield wiper fluid, my dip stip. I got a plastic cover on here, my air box, which covers my battery terminals. Not a huge fan of that. I always like to be able to easily access in case I need to jump my battery or somebody else's. And then my air box coming in here. So take a look at this. You've got some extra space if you want to run lines. If that's something you do, if not, don't worry about it. But just know that this is probably the one negative under here I do not care for. All right guys, so before we leave the front end of this car, we should talk about a couple things. The first being a horsepower comparison. So this car gets, of course, like I mentioned, 280 horsepower coming out of this 3.5 liters transmission. But I want to see what it looks like compared to some of the other vehicles out there. So if you're thinking maybe a Sienna or you're thinking a Pacifica, how does this car stack up? So I'm going to throw something up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks against some of those other vehicles out there. Now, while that's on the screen, I will remind you that Let's say you're looking at this and you think, well, I want to see in the Honda family. So maybe I'll look at a Pilot also. The Pilot uses this exact same engine, 3.5 liter engine, putting out 280, 280 horsepower. So just be aware of that. So after you've looked at that, let's talk about miles per gallon. All right, guys, so here we are right up front on this vehicle. And let's talk about miles per gallon. So this car gets 19 in the city and 28 on the highway. So I want you to have an understanding for how this car, of course, stacks up to some of the other vehicles out there in the market. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can really see and compare, not only now that you know the horsepower, but miles per gallon. So when you're stacking that up to other vehicles, you'll be able to tell how that stacks up. So take a look at that, and then we'll start making our way around the car. All right, guys, so before we do a walk around on this car, I wanna to talk to you about the trim levels that drop below it and come above it, right? So we're in the EXL model known for having leather, moonroof, power tailgate, that sort of thing. Now, if you wanna drop down to the EX, I want you to understand how much money you're gonna save, but also what amenities you're gonna give up. Now, this being right around that 40, 41 range, you're gonna be dropping down to, I wanna say about 36, nine, so roughly 37 grand if you drop down to that EX, but I want you to see what are those items you're gonna be giving up. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so you can understand, hey, what am I giving up if I wanna go down a trim level? Now, with that said, if leather is something you have to have in the car, you could always have it added to an EX, or you could just buy the EXL, which would probably make more sense. Now, after we've talked about that, let's talk about what's above this EXL. So above the EXL is gonna be your touring model. And this is where you're gonna see things like rear entertainment land in the car automatically, or, or things that, you know what I mean, uh, like Wi-Fi hotspots and different things of that nature, one inch larger wheels. So some of the, the, the nicer amenities of the car. Now, at that point, I want to say that you're going to be around the 44 and change range if you're jumping up to that. So I want you to know, hey, if I do move up to that, what additional features am I going to get? Right. So that's the next thing I want to throw up on the screen is, of course, how much extra am I paying and what else am I going to be getting if I decide that maybe the EXL isn't for me, but I'm jumping up to that touring model. So take a look at that on the screen so that you can get a strong understanding for, hey, is the EXL really the trim I want or do I need to be one down or one above? So after you've taken a look at that, we're going to do a walk around on the car and go over all the features. All right, guys, so let's do a walk around of this car. So the first thing I want to start you on is down here. You're going to have an 18 inch alloy wheel on this vehicle. If you're jumping up to that touring model, that's where you're going to be seeing those 19 inches. So I'll throw something up on the screen so you can kind of understand what all vehicles have what. So as we wrap around the car, I will point out that this does have an LED setup. So you got daytime running lights, headlights, and then of course down uh, below your fog lights. Now, as we come across here, you've got the black grill with the chrome top finish bumper. Uh, of course, the emblem. Down below, I have this, and then back behind some of that, I've got my radar that's gonna be used for Honda sensing. And then as I come up, 
Uh, you're gonna see a cutout of a trapezoid up there. That's where the camera lives that you're also gonna use for Honda Sensing. Now, when I mention that, let's talk about those Honda Sensing features. The first being a collision mitigation braking system. So if it's looking like I'm gonna hit another car from behind, it'll be an audible alert, and it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent that accident. So that's collision mitiga mitigation braking. Now, you also have a road departure mitigation. So if I'm starting to drift off the shoulder of the road, it can give me an audible alert and then shake the window and say, hey, wake up, pay attention. Uh, maybe you're getting drowsy. Now, on top of that, using this camera up here, it also has lane keep assist. So that camera can detect the lines on the road. So as you're driving down the road, if you start to drift a little bit to the left or the right, it can keep you actually centered uh, and correct for you to keep you in those lines. So if you get distracted, your kids do something on you, your coffee spilled, your dog jumped on you, a million different things can happen, especially if you're driving a big vehicle like this with a lot of luggage, a lot of people, and things of that nature. So know that you have all of that working for you. Now, up top, you of course do have a moonroof inside of this vehicle. So I'll point that up so you can see out there. Now, as we wrap around the side, I do want to talk a little bit about additional safety. So you've got a lot of airbags in this car, two front, two side, two full curtain. And I want to say you have two knee airbags as well. Uh, so we'll double check on that and throw it up on the screen. Of course, you do have the turn indicators in your mirrors to let everybody know which way you're going. And they are breakaway mirrors, just so you can see. Now, as we continue to move around, it is a smart key entry, meaning I can walk up, put my hand on the door handle and pop it open and it'll unlock automatically with my keys in the pocket. It's got to be 32 inches or I can lock it using this little black button right here. Now, off the keys, I can't open my sliding door. So I'll point that out that you can see it right here if I wanted to pop them open. So long as they're unlocked, all I got to do, press the button and I can fire these suckers open. Now, with that said, safety wise, I will remind you that of course you can close them from inside of here or off the pop, but if you do close them, right? No big deal, know that these have safety sensors on them along with your moonroof too. So if a little hand or something gets smushed in here, it's not gonna smash them and ruin them, right? So they can keep those little digits floating around. So just be aware of that. Now, as we continue to wrap around, of course you have your nice big brake lights back here that wrap the side and around the back. I do have a small spoiler with an indicator uh, as far as braking in it as well. And then up top, I've got my fin as far as, you know, Achieving those things like uh, getting access to AM, FM, satellite radio, you know, that sort of thing. Now, down here, I've got, of course, my grill, excuse me, my emblem wrapped in black and silver. And then I've got my uh, backup camera. And then down below, I've got a single exhaust system with some reflectors. Now, of course, across here, I've got a badge. And then on the back, I'll point out that you do have a windshield wiper, which you can see I've got some leaves living in. So let's talk about the cargo space. So guys, when it comes to the Honda Odyssey, I will say that you have got a lot of cargo space back here. So I've got this deep well that I'm sitting in. It's actually 32.8 cubic feet of space. And that's just with these seats up. Now, if we flip these seats down, which so I'll show you in a second, you've got 88 point uh, eight cubic feet. And then if you fold those down and take out the front seats, I want to see you have something like 144.8 or something. It's wild. This car has got a lot of cargo space in comparison to things like the Honda Pilot. So if you're thinking, maybe I want a Pilot because I just don't know if my ego or my pride will let me own a Honda Odyssey, I will say you have got a lot of space in this car and a lot of seat variety. And I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, guys, so as we continue to talk about cargo space, I want to show you how the third row folds away. It's pretty simple. You've got pull tabs here. All i got to do is pull, and it folds away. So I can do this one-handed. Obviously, I could have something else in the hand, much like my GoPro right now. So easy enough to fold these away. And now you can see that 88.8 .8 cubic feet of space that I have inside of this car. Now, this first row, or excuse me, I should say second row, is actually removable. So let me show you how that works as well. All right, guys, so let's talk about how you can remove this to create even more cargo space. So back here, I've got a tab right here that I can pull and this folds down. Now down below, same thing. I got a tab here that unlocks it. And then immediately when I pull this tab, it'll pop up. So from here, it's sitting on hangers and I can then pull this out. So you can see, not that hard to do as far as removing things. Now I can continue to remove all three of these. But what's cool about this is this is on a rail system. So I can take this seat, grab underneath and slide that seat right on over, right? So I've got a lot of different gripping places for this. So when it comes to competing with other vehicles out there in the market, this is a very unique situation. And even comparing with other Hondas, this is unique only to Honda Odyssey. So while we're here and we're talking about different kinds of cargo space, I wanna do a comparison. So we talked about the 32.8 cubic feet in the very back end of this car. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market so that you can really get an understanding. Now, as that's popping up now, once you've looked at that, of course, we can fold down that second row, right? So then we're looking at, I want to say it's 88 and change as far as your cubic feet of a uh, storage space. So I want to throw a comparison up so that you can see how this car stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market in that relation, right? And then after that, I believe you jump up to 144 cubic feet uh, if you remove this first, or excuse me, this second row to create a ton of space in the back of this car. Uh, so whether you're removing one seat, all the seats, just the center seat to make a climb through, however you want to do it, right? So after you've looked at that comparison, 
Then we'll jump into some rows and talk about the spacing and kind of the ergonomics of it. So before we leave the very back end and start into that third row to talk about space and everything, I wanted to remind you that you have a setup in this car that's very unique. Uh, it's essentially a lounger mode in the back here. So you can see what I've done here. I don't know if you could tell, and I'll hop off the seat is, I've actually pulled the seat back and locked it into place. So what I mean by that is, my, my third row seat, I fold it down, but I can keep it locked. And then if I slide on my rest, I can use this as a recliner. It happens to be covered. So if I'm out there watching my kids play baseball, soccer, whatever it may be, and I'm sitting on the hot sun, I can create some shades, see what to watch them. I can have the AC blowing and guess what? My AC vents for my third row are right there. So it'll be blowing right up on my neck and feel nice. Now, how I did that, I'll show you on this other side. If I start to pull this, but then let go, it'll remain locked so that it won't break, right? So from there, all I gotta do is slide these out to where now I have this nice big seat that I can sit on facing. So even if I'm not at a game, let's just say I'm out at the beach and I wanna be able to sit and enjoy the view, I absolutely could do that. So this is just one way you can use the third row. Now let's flip it up and hop into that back area. All right guys, so here we are in the third row of this car and I'll actually point out that it actually has quite a bit of space. So I'm gonna flip this around and show you a couple things. So I have this seat pushed up just to show you how much space you can create. And on the other side, I have it pushed all the way back. So if I slide over here, even as a six footer, I could still fit behind myself. Mind you, this one's a little bit tighter and I have the seat reclined versus over here, but just something to be aware of. So you're looking at 38.1 cubic square, uh, excuse me, cubic inches, right? So just something to be aware of. I'll throw a comparison up on the screen so you can understand how this car stacks up to some of the other vehicles out there in the market. While that's up on the screen, I'll remind you that this is a leather interior. Depending on your exterior color, it's gonna dictate what color interior you have. So this is gonna be the darker of the leathers. Uh, but now that you've looked at that, let's kind of come in here and point out a couple things. Of course, you got this leather finish. Your, your, your headrests go up and down. I like that they fold down to give you more visibility out the back versus if I'm using this one, it kind of uh, creates a little bit harder to see out the back end of the vehicle. Now back here, I do have cup holders and then I do have air vents. So everybody on both sides will have space as far as that goes to get to their air vents. And then of course I do have a uh, 12 volt outlet back here as well. I like that you can remove this entire second row. So whether I wanted to slide this over and climb out the side, whether I wanna make it, you know, just a climb through in the middle, I have so many options. I could remove it completely uh, if I wanted to use it for Uber, right? So a million different ways that I can use this as far as a seating arrangement goes in this car. All right, guys, so here we are in the second row of this vehicle, which you've even got even more leg space. So you have 40.9 inches of, of space as far as your leg room goes in the second row, which is actually, I can believe what lives in the front row as well. So I'm gonna pull you on in here. And of course we talked about this. All three of these are removable. I did mention that they're on that rail system that I wanna show you, which is right here. All I've gotta do is grab it underneath. There's a metal. If I pull up, it allows me to slide these across. And there's different spots that they'll hook into. So if I pull and then start to slide, it'll lock in, right? So I've got multiple locking points that I can move these around to. And you can do that for all of these, right? So whether you wanna have this one and just that one, whether you wanna have this and just your centerpiece, maybe you wanna remove all of them. So a lot of different ways you can apply uh, in this second row. And then I'll point out, of course, that I do have my sunshades up here and I've got spot for water bottles. As we talked about earlier, I have air vents up here. And then of course I can close these doors right here. I can close them with the handles as well. And then a reminder, they do have the sensors, right? So it's not even gonna put, I don't know, a pound or two of pressure before it'll reopen it to make sure that you're safe. Uh, and it'll do the same thing for the sunroof or moonroof as well. All right, guys, so here we are in the front row of this car. Uh, leg space wise, you've got 40.9 inches, as I mentioned a second ago. So I've got a lot of space. As a six footer, I'm pushing 250. I'm a big guy. I've got plenty of space to move here. And what I like is that you don't have anything over here, which I'll show you here in just a second. It gives you a lot of uh, knee room on your right side. So you can really kind of throw it out, right? So leather interior up here too. So you can see the dark interior with the white stitching is what I've got here. So let me pick you up and we'll show you some different things here. So first off, leg wise, this is what I was mentioning. I can swing my leg through. It gives me a lot of space if you wanted to throw a bag or anything like that, big water bottle or anything there. And of course I have my storage here too. Now up top, I've got all this storage as well. So I can throw a phone right there if I needed to. And then I got additional storage down there, USBs, aux imports, things of that nature. And then up here, I've got, you know, some USBs and a power outlet here as well. So. Up top, I've got my moonroof, which I pointed out earlier. One touch to throw it back. Um, so I can throw it all the way back. I won't do that completely. Or if I press directly up on it, I can crack it, right? So easy enough to understand. Over here, this connects to my door lights. So if I want the doors, uh, when they open these lights to come on, I've got a few different switches I can go through. And then up top, you've got a you know mirror with a, you know, keep an eye on the guys in the back and it'll hold sunglasses for you. So a few different things that you got here. This is what I call just normal new car stuff, right? This is kind of the things you expect to live inside of a vehicle. So. As you come across the dash here, I've got the leather interior on the arms. I've got additional storage down there. I've got leather up here and below. Uh, so the leather is nice that it's on top and it's dark. So it's going to prevent glare as you come across. Uh, and then you'll come across, of course, to your normal button. So let's walk through the dash. 
you have a couple things here, right? So the first is your parking brake, right? So I can lift up or press in. And when I press in, it's gonna set it. When I pull back towards me, it's gonna release it. So it's actually a little bit backwards from the other Honda vehicles if you're coming from one of those. And then I have brake hold. Brake hold steps where if I'm in drive, this will actually hold the brake while I'm in drive to where I could relax. So if I'm in stop and go traffic, I could remove my foot from the brake while the car's in and drive. It'll hold the brake. And then when I touch it, it'll release and start to move forward again. So kind of a convenience feature right here. Now up above it, I can control those back doors. So I can press this and open both of my sliding doors and then I can actually lock them with this button right here. So as you can see, I just popped those open, right? So let's go ahead and close those back up. So as I'm closing those back up, I'll point out that you can also control the powered uh, tailgate. So I can pop that open as well right here. Now, next to that is vehicle stability assist. This works with my traction control. So in the event that I'm going in a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction, can, uh, better traction, right? So this is always on and running. Now above that, I have a button right here. If I press that, it's gonna pull up some of those Honda sensing features that we talked about earlier. So the first being road departure mitigation. This is where I mentioned if you start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give you an auto alert and vibrate the wheel to say, hey, wake up, pay attention, you're driving off the shoulder of the road. Now, if I scroll down one, you have your blind spot information system. So in this vehicle, they're not gonna live in the mirrors over here like most other Hondas. They're actually gonna live right here. So you have these indicators, which you may or may not be able to see, uh, but that will light up in orange if there's a car in your blind spot. And if you start to get over, it'll give you an audible alert to let you know, hey, there is someone there. Right now, the last one is gonna be your collision mitigation braking system. Uh, so this is what we mentioned earlier. If it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, first it'll give me an audible alert, then it'll actually flash in the dash and it'll actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. So all these different safety features working, uh, which you can turn on and off. So just be aware that if you don't like one, you can adjust the, uh, you know, the, the sensitivity of them and then you can turn them off as well. So just be aware of that. Now, let's talk about the steering wheel. So on the steering wheel, I like that there's not a ton of buttons because there's nothing worse than getting into a car that you're foreign with and not really knowing uh, you know, what to do and it's just overwhelming, right? So on the left side, it's gonna be predominantly audio and Bluetooth and on the right, it's gonna be a couple other uh, Honda sensing features. So volume controls right here. Um, as far as my home button, this is gonna give me all these different menus up here, which I won't touch on them too much other than, you know, now playing maintenance of soil, oil life, safety support, we just went over, my settings, right? And then I can jump into, you know, miles per hour, or kilometers an hour, if I just wanna blank it out uh, and then it jumps back up to the top, right? So easy enough to understand as you toggle through these different screens. Now down here, you've got your Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, to hang up and use voice command, now, voice command will work not only uh, for placing, you know, phone calls and normal things like that through the car, uh, but also through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, if you're not familiar with those, we'll go over those in just a second when we hop to the touchscreen, but it'll give you the option to say, hey, no, hey, Siri, do this. Hey, Siri, text that person. Hey, Siri, pull these navigation directions up. Same thing with OK Google, right? So pretty cool dual feature. Now, as you move across, right, to their side, which, hey, I'll hit the horn. That's what it sounds like, just in case you're curious. Um, <laughs> so on the other side here, we have two different features. The first being lane keep assist. So if I press this button, it's gonna bring up these dotted lines up here. So when you're going over 45, those will fill in solid. And what it's doing is it's using that camera that I pointed out earlier up here to detect those lines on the road. So as it picks up those lines, uh, what it'll do is if you start to drift to the left or the right, it'll actually you know move the steering wheel and keep you centered. So if you're ever in a car that pulls a little bit to the left or right, that's what it feels like when it's correcting for you. A reminder, you can always turn this on and off, but it's nice if you're taking a long road trip or if you just you know get distracted because there's a lot going on in the car. Now the other is gonna be related to your uh uh, I should say uh, adapter cruise control or classic cruise control. So when I get to the speed I wanna set, I would just press the set button. Right now it's showing me off right there, but it would say the speed I'm going. Now, once I have that, of course, I can do the classic moves where you see the plus and the minus, and I can increase the speed or decrease the speed, right? But what I wanna use is this button right here. When I press this button, you're gonna see some boxes appear here. Now, what it's using is that radar down in the front of the grill to bounce it off the next car in front of me. So when it picks that car up, what it's gonna do is keep the designated spacing I pick with the amount of boxes I've declared, right? So the less, least amount of boxes, the least space is gonna keep between me and the car in front of me. The most boxes, the more space is gonna keep between me and the car in front of me, right? So this way you can determine your comfort level. So if you just wanna flip over to a classic cruise, you can actually press and hold this button and then it'll flip over and if I press again, ACC mode, which is that adaptive cruise control. So you have the option of both. Now up here, you will see that you have paddle shifters, a plus and a minus. And what that's allowing you to do is to literally uh, control the shifting points of the car. So this way it's a 10 speed transmission, but it'll give you the ability to downshift and upshift uh, to get a little bit more performance out of it uh, to, to your advantage, right? So this gives you a little bit more control over the car, which some people like. Now over here, you've got your auto on of headlights. And of course you have your fog light controls right here. And then on the other side, you have your windshield wipers. Front, you just pull down, and then your back ones are going to be controlled off the tip of the stalk right here. And then it's intermittent, so you, of course, you control the speeds, right? So now, let's talk about the touchscreen. 
All right, guys, so here we are on the touchscreen of this vehicle. So I just want to briefly walk you through this and just kind of explain what you have available to you. And then I'll show you a couple cool settings that you can play with. The first thing I just want to point out is if you want to customize this screen and move buttons around, all you got to do is press and hold and it'll pull up this menu, which will then allow you to start moving stuff around. So just be aware of that. If I want to start moving stuff around, pulling it from over here to over here to kind of get what I use typically the most in this area, I can do that along with these buttons up here as well, right? So I can move those around. Once you're done, just press done. So just want you to know that up front so that you can customize this. Now, you can connect up your phone, obviously, via Bluetooth and then have the access to, you know, place phone calls, that sort of thing, get to your contacts, all of that. Fantastic, easy enough to understand. Now, you also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I'll come to last. That way we can touch on it and show you exactly what it looks like. Now, FM, I'll just briefly touch on this and show you that, of course, you have all your stations and point out that you do have HD radio stations as well. So know that you have you know, some additional stations that live on top of those layered in uh, if you're not used to that. Trip computer I can pull up. I can easily see how many uh, miles per gallon I'm getting, what my current range is, which is 410 on this tank of gas, and then see my trip A and trip B uh, as I'm going through. So you can see that same information over in the dash display, just a different place to see it if you're on like, a, ro a long road trip. SMS text function, once you've connected up your phone, it'll actually prompt you and allow you uh, to receive your texts and read them aloud to you. So just be aware that you absolutely can take advantage of that. Bluetooth audio, same thing. If I wanna stream audio off of my device and be able to listen to it through the car, I can absolutely do that. I've just gotta connect up a, a phone. Now, Sirius XM you get for 90 days free, and then afterwards it'd be up to you if you want to continue it, but I'm sure you can figure this out. You've probably seen Sirius XM at some point in a rental car in a car you've owned, right? Now, as we continue to move across, you do have USBs. Now, for your USBs, of course, I can plug in my device if I want to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but I could also just plug in a thumb drive if I wanted to store a bunch of music to it and be able to listen to that music off that thumb drive. So kind of a cool feature that you can take advantage of. Now, as we continue back through here, I do have that 3.5 milliliter aux jack that's in the center console. So of course I could always plug in if I have like an old school device that I wanna go with, right? FM, just like AM, you got the HD radio station, seek tune, all the normal stuff that you would expect to see. Um, so as I continue to keep coming around here, system updates works off of Wi-Fi, so you don't have to really worry about that other than if you're connected to Wi-Fi, it'll give you the ability uh, to of course update the car. Uh, and then my Honda Music, this is gonna give you that ability to store music to the car. So I wanna see you have a couple gigs worth of storage space. So if you plugged in a USB drive, that have music on it, you could pull it over onto the car. Uh, that way you don't have to keep the USB inside the car if you don't want to. And then of course, if you just want like a clock with wallpaper, which you can customize this and change this stuff around, whether you want different clock faces, different times, you know, all these different things, and you can add in your own personal one as well. So very easy if you just want to kind of have something that you can jump over to occasionally uh, to mess with, right? So whether it's a 12 hour format, a 20 hour format, you know, easy enough to understand. Now, as we continue across here, social playlists. So if you wanna use this, you're gonna to wanna to probably download the uh, Cabin Control app. Now, once you've downloaded the Cabin Control app, what it's gonna allow you to do is actually, if everyone's on the Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, it's gonna allow everyone to add songs to a playlist together. Really cool feature. While you're on that Cabin Control app, you can also control other things like the AC, right? So you have these abilities to control different things. You can throw navigation up to the screen if you're in a vehicle that has navigation. So some cool features that you can do with this, but just a social playlist alone, I think is a really cool feature. And, and Cabin Control, the app itself is free to download. Uh, and you would just need to, like I said, hop on the Wi-Fi hotspot. So um, as you come across here, Honda Link, um, it offers some different features. The first one being that, yeah, in the event that you get into a wreck, uh, the, the car will first call down to you. And if you don't answer, they can then send somebody out to you. If this is assuming the airbags deploy, I would always enable this. It's 100% free and it'll help protect your passengers. Uh, and then secondarily, you have other features available to you, like starting the car from your phone or controlling the door locks from your phone. So just something to be aware of that you can take advantage of um, as far as, you know, uh, subscription-based features inside of the car. So that's kind of a quick rundown to all the different features that you see uh, as we work through here. Uh, so easy enough to understand. So let's talk about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. All right, guys, so I've got my phone connected up to the USB inside of the center console, uh, and you can see that the Android Auto light has uh, lit up. So I typically use a Google Pixel, uh, so I will be using this. If you're an Apple user, you would have access to this. The only difference between these two is if you're an Android-based user, you are gonna need to download the Android Auto app. Apple users, you don't need to do anything, right? So when I click into this, it's immediately gonna pull up a couple different things. I typically use Google Maps, so that's what it's immediately gonna pull up for me. And you can see Spotify down here. And then of course I have the Google Voice command button over here or off the steering wheel, as I mentioned earlier, where I can ask it to do things, you know, navigate to this person, send a text, place a call, all of those different options. So I'm gonna jump in here and show you kind of the list of apps that I use. Now, there are plenty of other apps that you can take advantage of and they're always forever updating. And of course, adding features to it, so be aware of that. Uh, but I wanna point out a couple quick ones. I use Google Maps, if you're a Waze person, you absolutely have access to that. If you're an Apple Maps person, I don't know why, you're a crazy person, but know that you can take advantage of it. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, music, Pandora, all kinds of different music apps available to you. My calendar, jumping back over into Honda, so this just allows me to jump back to this screen right here. As we continue down here, 
I'll just point out a couple other things as far as different messenger systems that I have that I can get to, my voice, my teams, uh, smart things as far as controlling some of the, the things living in my house, uh, the weather, and then of course ways as I mentioned earlier. And then of course you can customize the back uh, the back screen and layout that you have here as well. So you can see that I have this, this one pull up here. So not hard to do, you can go into those settings and play with them. So just know that you can take advantage of that if you want, but this gives you a lot of connectivity up in the car that really doesn't give you a need to have built-in navigation to a car anymore because this will allow you to pull it up, do it all from the screen right here. And then of course, I don't have to worry about updates ever again because my phone will update and take care of all of this for me. So this is what Android Auto looks like. Apple CarPlay is gonna be very similar to what you're used to seeing on the Apple display screen. And then when you click into your apps, same kind of idea. So before we leave this, I do wanna show you your backup camera. So I'm gonna pop this car down into reverse so you can see what that looks like. So when I do this, I will point out that you'll see, I've got three different views here. So a wide angle view, a normal view, and then one aimed straight down. So this is about you know six six inches from your car. Uh, so that way, if you're backing up, it's gonna let you know ex exactly how close you are to something. And this is where your tailgate's gonna swing open too. So very helpful as far as backing up to a garage, a bush, if you're in a parking structure, that sort of thing, uh, through these different screens here. I do have cross traffic monitoring. So if somebody's coming from my left or right, and I'm in between, let's say, two large SUVs or two big uh, trucks, whatever it may be, it'll give me an audible alert and then show me arrows on the screen to let me know which way cars are coming from so that I don't back out and get sideswiped by one of them. So very easy to use this functionality. You can see it's on, I can turn it on and off. If it's blue, it's on. When I can, when I hit it to gray, it's grayed out. That means it's no longer running, right? So same thing, whatever blue is pulled up is gonna be which display you're seeing as far as your backup camera. Real quick, I'll just explain these features right here. It's not a classic shifter, which throws a little bit of people for a loop, but you've got your LEDs to light up whatever gear you're in. So very easy to understand in my opinion, uh, as far as working through shifting in your gears. You have heated seats up front, so I've got them here. And then on the other side, I've got them here and you can see what level I'm on. Uh, my idle stop start. So when I come up to a complete stop, this is always in running unless every time I get in the car, I press to turn it off. So kind of a bummer that there's no way to turn this feature completely off. But what it does is if I'm sitting in stop and go traffic, uh, instead of allowing the car to just sit there and, and continue to run, it can turn off the engine, but let the AC and electronics stay on in the car to help improve that gas mileage, that 19 in the city and 28 on the highway. Now, one below that is gonna be my functionality as far as shifting points. So I can jump over to a snow mode or a normal mode. So just depending on what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of weather I'm driving in, it'll shift the car a little bit differently to create more traction. So that's what you're seeing here. And then the econ button, if I engage this, you'll see a green uh, leap appear up in your dash. But what it does is it's gonna help improve the gas mileage, but in doing so, it's gonna affect uh, some electrical systems of the car. Things like the AC unit won't blow quite as hard and your accelerator down below isn't gonna take off and go quite as fast, but you're gonna get better gas mileage. You can improve on that 19 in the city, 28 on the highway. So just something to be aware of. All right, guys, we did it. We made it through the entire car, right? So I just wanna revisit all those comparisons that we talked about so that you have a, a kind of a quick rundown of them. Uh, so starting at the very front of the car horsepower, this car gets 280 horsepower horsepower underneath the hood. So I'm gonna throw that comparison back up at the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market. Now, after you've taken a look at that, I wanna talk about gas mileage. This car gets 19 in the city and 28 on the highway coming out of that 3.5 liter V6. So I want you to understand how it stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen. While that's up there, I'll remind you that if you're considering this to the Honda Pilot, which I've actually want one sitting over here that I'm pointing at that you can't see. Uh, I'll let you know that it uses the same engine. So you're looking at roughly the same gas mileage uh, and horsepower, right? So just something to be aware of if you're thinking about jumping between the two, the, the engine and transmission in these cars are pretty much interchangeable. It's really just gonna be the chassis differences. Now. After you looked at that comparison, we should talk about leg space. So up front, you've got 40.9 inches of leg space in this vehicle. Uh, so I'm gonna throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other vehicles out there on the market. Now, after you've looked at that, we're gonna talk about that second row leg space, which happens to be the exact same dimensions, 40.9 inches of leg space in the second row of this vehicle as well. Uh, so I'm gonna throw that comparison back up on the screen so you see how it stacks up to other vehicles, second row leg space. Uh, now. After we talked about that, we should jump into that third row, which is a little bit smaller, which I wanna say is 38.4 inches of leg space when you're getting in that third row, which is surprisingly very usable. As an adult who's six foot, I can fit back there and I don't gotta cut my feet diagonally and aim my feet to where they'll fit under the seat or, you know, it, it, it's not that kind of third row. It's actually a usable functional third row. Uh, so it, it's nice to be able to say that. I get into a lot of vehicles where it's really not. Um, so now that we talked about the third row leg space and I've thrown that comparison up on the screen, I wanna talk to you about cargo space. 
So I am gonna talk about first with the, just the third row up and using that general cargo space, that cutout hole you have down below. I wanna see you've got 32.8 cubic inches uh, of space. So I'll, I'll throw that up on the screen and then throw the comparison up so you can see how the car stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market. Now, if you fold the third row down, uh, that then gives you, I wanna say 88.8 cubic uh, feet of storage space. Uh, so I'll throw that comparison up so you can see how the car stacks up to those other cars if you're putting that third row away, if they have that capability, right? Some do some maybe don't uh, now after that this one in the second row it's completely removable as we went over so you could take that out and have even more cargo space so the versatility and seating in this car it, it's so much better than like a honda pilot but i understand sometimes it's hard to spend a lot of money on a car that you maybe don't necessarily like but you know that you need but i want to throw that up on the so i want to say it was 144 and some change as far as cubic feet of storage space if you take the second row out and pull that third row down right so i'll throw that comparison up on the screen so you can understand how it stacks up to those other vehicles out there in the market right so that is all of the comparison that we went over today. Now, outside of that, I just wanna say a couple things. If you're looking at this and really comparing it to a pilot, if you can take the idea of owning a minivan out, if that's an issue for you, if you can just take those two apart and just compare the vehicles themselves, this car really offers more. As far as, especially if you have children, it's a lower entry point so your kids can get in and out easier so they can do it on their own versus having to help them down out of like a pilot or another SUV make model out there. Um, as far as the doors go, sliding doors. Man, getting car seats in and out is so much easier if you have a minivan with those sliding doors. I can't even explain how much easier it is, especially if you're in a, a busy parking lot where you may not have space next to you, right? So being able to just shift that out and have a big entry hole to get in and out of makes a difference. Now, not only that, but in that second row, you have have that removable space where you can move this center set and make it a climb through that just makes this car so much more versatile than things like a pilot uh, and a lot of the other vehicles out there in the market right so i love those things about this car and then when you hop into the third row it's a usable third row and you can fold it away and you can fold it back and use that third row to, to basically be a lounger to watch your kids play sports or if you're out at the beach or whatever it may be it's a game changer, guys. Uh, this car really is a versatile vehicle. The only knock on it really is that it's a minivan and people struggle with that idea. But let's be honest, if you're one of those people who owns an SUV and you've got the stickers on the back and you got four kids that pile out of it, pretty much everybody considers you the same person anyway. You just don't happen to own a minivan. You just have a minivan that's lifted up with some bigger tires on it, right? Uh, so looking past that, I would say versatility wise, this car, it outshines the pilot in that sense of so many different options, safety features, you know, sensors, uh, door controls from the front, the back, the AC controls, cabin control, all these different features that you can take advantage of. I really do like this car. If I was doing a lot of traveling across country, I would highly recommend this, even if you don't have kids. I run into a lot of people when I sold these, they would buy it because they had kids and their kids got grown and they had all or, or their kids were teenagers and they piled in all their kids because they were going to sporting events or going places and then their kids were grown but they just liked the car and they had all that space and they're not ready to give it up so you tend to find people that own several and don't trust me ask someone who owns one they'll tell you all the great things about them other than that, I have a couple of favors to ask you. One, will you please press the like button for me? One, it makes me feel happy and joy inside to know that somebody's out there watching these videos and they like them. And of course, it does help push these videos to the top of the search results, which let's be honest, there's a lot worse uh, reviews out there and I'd love to get people's eyes on mine, right? Secondarily, hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel so that I can tell you about, of course, Honda Odysseys and other vehicles out there in the make uh, the, and how they stack up to Hondas, right? I love to talk about these cars and I feel like I do a pretty good job. So hopefully you'll subscribe and let me do that for you. And then lastly, I hope you'll um, uh, share the video, right? If you're in a forum, if you're on a Facebook group uh, with some other Odyssey owners or, or you're looking to own Odyssey, hey, I hope that you'll share this video with them. Hopefully they can pick up something or maybe they know something that I need to know about, which brings me to my last point. I hope that you guys will comment on the video. If you feel like I've missed something or there's something you wish I would go over or just a quick question, please leave a comment. Let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer it. You can always give me a call. You can text me. You can shoot me an email. You can shoot me a gift if you want. I don't care. Maybe it's something cool I want to see and laugh at. Uh, so I usually put that in the uh, description of the video to so know that there are a lot of different ways to reach me. Or if you're afraid to you know, reach out directly, you can always go through Facebook. I have a Facebook page as well. So like it, subscribe, comment, and share. That's the four things I want you to do. Other than that, let her go!